Hey, welcome back everyone. How are you? Hope you're doing okay. Today's episode is about the process from on location, the raw file, all the way to final result printing. And I will be showing you how I print and edit this photograph. Looks fantastic. Um, so I was in Page, Arizona at the Horseshoe Bend uh, last week on my trip to Wisconsin. I drove through several states and <clears throat> this, um, this day, the video that you will see right now, it was amazing. The conditions ones were fantastic. I, I, I don't know, I cannot explain with words what I feel. It, it, it was perfect, it, all the conditions to get together and, and in one spot. I have a perfect landscape location. I have a perfect uh, weather. I have rain, sun, clouds, everything, you name it. You'll see it in the video right now. So I'm gonna show you how I capture that photograph and I will show you my, my War process in Lightroom and Photoshop and to the final result is the printing that you saw and um, it's a long video but if you want to learn my process stay to it if don't just skip forward until the part that is interesting for you I don't know but I highly recommend to watch the whole video and um, okay with no more delay let's jump to it let's go to Page Arizona That sky. Where is it? Look, look, there you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. Beautiful sky, and it's rain in the background, I believe. Beautiful. This is what I love about photography. Wow. I'm a ISO 100 F13, uh, one tenth of a second. Already did super nice shot. Love it. I love the rain and the background, it's amazing. Oh, well, you'll see the picture right now. Okay, we are back in the studio. Like you saw in the video, conditions were perfect. I can describe, it was amazing. So, for the sake of this video, I don't want to go too long. I'm going to make as fast as I can. I hope you enjoy this and you know follow through so you you know I hope these tips and my technique help you to edit your photos and so what I'm going to this is the photograph that I this that I choose that I I'm going to edit this one and then we're going to print it in the canson paper uh, at the end of the, the video so first I'm going to do some global adjustment with the basic panels and then I'm going to do some local adjustment with brushes, radial filter, gradual right filter, and cropping. It will be the last uh, step that I'm going to do today. I always like to crop at the end. I like to work with my photograph. And I believe because of this landscape mode photograph, I'm going to do a two by three ratio. I'm going to keep it in the original ratio that my camera photographed. Um, so first thing, I'm going to lens correction. I always enable uh, profile correction with my lens to avoid distortion because this is an spherical lens, very, very old lens Tamron. I think it's time to an upgrade for this lens and remove chromatic aberration. Then I go to basic panel. Uh, here I expose uh, my photograph is a little bit under. You can see the histogram here has a lot of dark areas. But I like to photograph like that, not too dark, but I like to photograph that. I still have some information here on the highlight. I always like to protect my highlights. Uh, sometimes it's, it's not good. Not every single image will come out good. So I like to do different, like a very light one and a 
but in this case this is the one that I choose so I'm going to start with my profile I like to work in Adobe landscape because it gives more saturation to my color this place if you've never been here the soil is very very orange and when you have a strong sunset color sun like we had today uh, it become very orange so landscape is my preference to go I going I should this a daylight so I'm gonna go daylight on my white balance um, and you can have two options you can go uh, and try it out this auto you can click auto and see what it does to the photograph actually it does a decent job uh, I like what it did to the to the sky right there you know it's good but there are some areas that I don't like there is a little dark um, but I'm not I'm not disappointed with this so second thing that I'm going to do for now we'll get back to that later but for now I'm gonna go and check for sensor dust and uh, like it says a very old lens and I know that this lens has these paths always have to correct that that's already in the lens or well, probably sometimes these little particles are inside the field in front of the filter you know I at this case I use a, a polarizer filter and I use a two-stop uh, graduated filter just to to get more detail on that sky done so perfect I like I like that um, maybe I'm gonna reduce the highlights a little bit more and you can see how the orange start popping right here that's how actually was the sky you know this is this is beautiful and uh, you know I like I like the haze back there it, it, it is it's unbelievable um, so my next step I, I don't like my images to contrast it so I'm gonna take that contrast out I don't like it you know and I'm gonna open up my exposure like there like almost half a stop I like that um, gonna give a little bit of clarity because you can see all these details on the rock right here and I'm going to use a little bit of texture the touch like a touch because I go if you go too much you can see the fake it become that fake HDR and I don't like that fake that's actually that's not how it is in real life so but the rock is a little bit so a little bit texture that that's a, a, a minimal that's it I like how, I mean, I have other composition, but I was here before and because I'm afraid of height. Yes, don't laugh. Uh, I, my composition last time that I was, I, I didn't include the whole curve of the river, but this time I wanted to do this and I went, I braved myself and I got, I, I got it, I, I did it. Um, so, but I like the, the curve of the, the river right here. It's, 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 it's what I was looking for and it's, it's all in the image uh, this side right here is is taller than this side right here so the picture looks like the horizon is not level but it's actually pretty level uh, but still we're gonna do that the, as the last step when we crop the image uh, to the desired uh, printing size so I think I am fine with these adjustments. Uh, I can play with the turn, the, the curves, uh, tone curve, maybe reduce a little bit the black and maybe bring up a touch. That. And that's how I like to get contrast on my images. And I think that's, that's good. The HSL panel because I work on Photoshop on my last stops, uh, steps, I'm sorry. Um, you know, sometimes I like to play with this, but you can see that the orange is the do most dominant color here, pretty much everywhere. So if I move this lighter up, uh, you know, it, it, it makes it really fake. So I am going to do that locally. I'm going to touch retouch every color locally not in a global way 
So, so far the image is pretty good. So I'm gonna use some dodge and burning in Photoshop. I think it's fine. Something that you need to have in mind, always play with split toning. And there's a way, super easy way to do it. Like just go here to 50% on your slider, right? And you start moving, moving until you find the desired color. If you have a sunset color, obviously you're gonna be orange most of it. So when you find the color that you like, I always like about 38, I believe so. And then you start reducing this slider saturation to more realistic desired color, not so much. And then the shadows were not that cold, but they were they were not so warm either. So I go once again 50% and shadows are the opposite, blue. So I got a blue right there and I'm going I'm gonna to reduce it completely to zero and I'm going to slowly go back up. And I think I'm happy that yeah. Uh, is toggling before after is this something if I really do it and I toggle before after you can see the different on the orange so I don't like that much that's perfect right there details I don't like the sharpening because I do that in Photoshop so I take it off and pretty much it sometimes i check my color correct you know um the calibration of my camera it's pretty accurate maybe I remove a little bit the blue and i play with this with the hue and saturation depending on the the predominant color but i think i'm happy right there all right so So, sorry. So now I'm gonna use the local adjustment and I'm going to start with a graduated filter to darken a little bit the skies and you know, just a touch, not so much. So here to make a straight line, you press shift and drag down. And I will put it right there in the horizon. Let's just make sure that I have restore to default. Custom is zero, and I'm going to first reduce the highlight, and it brings up more detail on that sky that it was amazing. Then I'm going to reduce the shadows to make it more dramatic. Maybe reduce a little bit the white. That's awesome sky looking. I hope you can enjoy and not so much my exposure. I think I'm okay there. Perfect. So now my second step will be a radial filter. And here I'm going to experiment something uh, because like I always said, never, never stop exploring, never stop experimenting either. This is your art uh, whenever you edit a photograph it's whatever you decide to do uh, but this is the way that I like to do it I'm going to um, create a radial filter in the middle of the image right there I'm gonna go here and make sure everything is uh, for some reason it keeps the all right I'm gonna keep it that way and here what I'm going to do I'm gonna read up attach my my exposure and that is more realistic what I saw that day just a touch on that maybe reduce a tiny bit the highlight open up attach the shadow for the river and the other part and I'm gonna give a little bit saturation that's it that's all that I'm going to do here 
and I'm so far I love I love these images pretty nice how it is I mean it's I don't think so I need to do much on this uh, but that's you know you sometimes you feel that you go you, you have this this urge to overwork your photograph and then they end up being super fake color I see now a lot on on Instagram and uh, I don't know why but one, you know people go too hard on the editing I try to keep my images as close as they were in the real life but hey, once again if it's that's your preference go ahead it's your photograph it's your art um, so I can see a little bit dark on here, but I'm not worried about that. Most of the sky is perfect. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to crop this image in a two by three ratio. But this is the way that I like to do. I unlock the little lock here, unlock that so I can have more freedom. And you can see by the rule of third the it, I think I have more in this side on the left side than the right side it's not so balanced so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna bring it in a tiny bit so my uh, main character is right center like I like uh, probably I want to keep this here but maybe I'm gonna bring a touch right there and I'm gonna bring in a touch right there and then I go back to custom and 2x3 and that's my perfect and I think I'm happy um, if I press here for correct the horizon you'll see what it does it changed a tiny bit but I don't know if that's correct because it's different levels it's not actually a horizon line here so you can have as a reference just gonna trust the, f the, the software for now press enter that's my picture and I think it's perfectly balanced and now I'm going to take it to Photoshop how I do that I press command E and take it to Photoshop okay now we're in Photoshop uh, first thing here's what I normally use Photoshop is for dodge and burning and uh, sizing and sharpening my image accordingly for pic for printing so first thing first like always command J to duplicate the layer so I can work on a different layer and if I have to go back I can go back and I don't dis destroy the original image so how do I go here so here I look around so here 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 I'm going to apply and for this I'm going to use my Wapcom tablet because it's easier for me so I have this TK7 panel which is super super good to use I highly recommend you get one of these there's many of these but for me the TK panel has been really wonderful so far so I'm gonna create uh, a dodge layer I'm gonna put my brush so I press B actually you don't have to press anything once you select the dodge uh, automatically select your brush and everything what I'm gonna do is my opacity I'm gonna I like to keep it really low like 20 opacity in the flow 40 uh, percent so I can work slowly on that uh, on that image and what I do with I just press slightly. I don't go hard so I, I just start painting with the light was hidden and, and make bring all this back to life tiny tiny so I bring all this color back to life and, and here is where the lights were hidden by the way there were people right here camping uh, the whole night that was wonderful uh, one day I want to do that alright so then I'm gonna create another one but uh, this time the opacity gonna be less I'm gonna get 10% and I'm going to paint on the river to light up the river a little bit more super super 
soft painting. Uh, you can I don't know if you can see before after before after it brings up a little bit that shiny part of the river because I use a polarizer polarizer I'm sorry I, I reduce the reflection there but this now is there but because it's very subtle 10% uh, opacity and 40% flow it's super super subtle you can see before after perfect I like that I am happy with that so now what I'm going to do I'm going to create another layer with all these adjustment and the way to do that is pressing command option shift E and it creates a different layer with all these adjustment there so I create a, a, a new layer and in this layer it has all these adjustments here and I'm going to work on this layer right now and I am going to bring back details from the sky. So for that I use the TK7 Rapid Mask which is super easy to create and this is working with Luminosity Mask. I know there's shortcuts and you can create layers but this is so easy for me to use. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to composite, it's the way you, use it. you press composite, then you're going to choose the mask in the dark or the midtones or the lights, whatever you want to work in. So right now I'm going to work on my lights. So I need to choose something that is on, on my highlights and, and so I can bring back detail and create that separation uh, I think that's too dark I'm going to use that one you can modify it over, you know with all these stuff you can use half of the stops but I think I'm happy with that one and you can see everything that is white it will be you know affected by my for whatever I do and everything there is dark it will be protected remember white reveal blacks conceal so that's how it is and then I am choosing a dodge um, and I'm so I make a selection and already I have all selected you cannot see it here it is the new thing before you used to have like a black uh, layers mass right here so now it's all selected and the software as long as it's red right here that means there is uh, activated as long as that is red, it's, it's activated the mask. So, and it choose for you the brush, and I'm gonna work highlights. If you can see on the top right here, I'm gonna work on the highlights, and my exposure is at 50%. And once again, anything that I paint, you can see how the highlights are changing. Maybe it's too much, maybe it's too, but it bring it, it makes separation, and that's it. I'm only doing it. Uh, soft right there that's all that I'm gonna do so I'll show you before after is a touch a touch of highlights so then I command D to deselect and I'm going to create another one command option shift E this is the way that I like to work I know probably there's different ways to work and I'm now I'm gonna work on the dark color and probably you can see see everything there is white right here that it will be affected to whatever I do um, so that's I think that's the one that I'm going to use and I'm going to only paint in the clouds and this time I'm going to use a burn um, brush and I am going to do it maybe less than 50 maybe I'm gonna do it 70 percent so it's not that dark and I'm going to paint here and everything there is dark is becoming a little bit more dark and it create a separation in there and that's it and let's see before after it's a little touch just to make it a little bit more dramatic uh, and I think I went too far. I'm going to reduce the opacity on this. That's it. 60% opacity. That's more realistic. Uh, 
yeah, that's more realistic. And... That's what I wanted. I love that picture. All right, and then what I do? I create one more layer, and you can apply if you like the Orton effect. In this case, I love how it is right here. But let's try it. You know, Orton effect is super easy. You create a layer. You go filter. You go blur. Gaussian blur and here the radius is going to be um, depending on how many pixels your camera have. My camera has 24 megapixel. I like to go around like 26, you know, 25. Let's do 27. You click OK and that's your image. <laughs> Just kidding. So then you go to image adjustment levels and here you're going to move the highlight all the way to the blowing point like a really blowing point and then you make the mid tones and the darker and you have this ugly image right there but don't worry that's not the way that it's gonna be you place uh, okay opacity all the way down to zero and this is the place and the moment where you uh, go for a cup of tea, glass of water, soda, beer, whatever is your preference so you can adjust your eyes. Um, and then when you come back, you know, your eyes going to be fresh and then you start going on the opacity as slowly, 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 slowly. Normally, uh, you can see how the pictures start getting that glowy, you know, dreaming look. You don't go too far because that is too fake and that's nothing so normally around 16 is a good uh, good for me but what I like to do here 16 20 I'm gonna leave it to me but what I like to do here I like how the effect around this but I don't like the effect on the main rock so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna create a mask I'm gonna create a mask I'm going to choose a brush and I'm going to use the black color. And once again, I am a 50% opacity and I'm going to start painting here and bring back the detail there and bring it all back, bring it all back. But I like how it looks on this side, you know kind of like on the outside I like I like that effect I like that that effect of the Orton effect but that's your preference you don't have to do it I like it so literally or Orton effect is around because my main main subject is this amazing rock named Horseshoe Bend I love it so that's it <clears throat> then I'm going to flatten all the layers. I am going to create another one and here's my step for printing. I'm going filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. And even though the picture is well and focus I like to keep my radius in 0 0.9 0 0.8 not so much to avoid this craziness you can see so 0 0.8 
is where I go 0.8 and for this type of printing I'm gonna keep it at 300 and uh, reduce noise about 25 this picture was taken at really low ISO and that is how I uh, done and then I export the photograph and then I print it in Lightroom so flatten image and we close it save it and that computer send the Photoshop send it back to Lightroom and that's where we're going all right I'm back in Lightroom so I have my photograph I already load up my paper it's uh, 11 by 17 it's I'm using the printer Canon Pro 1000 and the paper is Canson Infinity and I'm using Photo Luster Premium RC and I already did all my adjustment that I need I did all my adjustment uh, that I needed for this uh, photograph like I say is 11 by 17 but the image is a 9 by 12 so I can put it in a nice frame and a nice car uh, mat around um, then I'm going to resolution is uh, 300 ppi uh, print sharpening will be high because I like this as a fine art photograph uh, I'm using luster paper like I said so I'm using glossy uh, Lightroom only give you two options matte or glossy because my paper has a little bit of shine is a uh, I'm gonna use glossy to take more advantage 16 bit and here is the problem that most of the people have uh, I had it for a long time until I found one solution and instead of letting all this profile color paper for some reason they were not working for me I never had the correct color or the most close color than what I was seeing in my monitor so I decided to my pictures be managed my printing be managed by by the printer so then go page setup just checking they have the correct uh, printer because I have another home series printer and then I have a correct paper it's okay and then I'm going printing setup and yes yes uh, I'm going to quality media photo luster paper top feed quality high perception photo is perfect I click save print okay I hope you like this video today you know I know it was a little bit long but uh, yeah this is the beauty of, of photography and this is why most of I think photographers don't like uh, don't like that put the extra work it's not just snapping the ca the photo and the camera you also have to put the extra work and do it all this editing accordingly to your preference and then printing the photos What's the point in going to a beautiful location, have perfect conditions, uh, use all that expensive gear and equipment just to have it on Instagram? Yes, it's now to showcase uh, your work, but the real essence of photography is printing. And so I hope you like this video. Here is the image. I don't know if you can see it very well or not, but uh, I printed on Canson uh, luster paper is fantastic and I'm gonna be signing this photo and if you want it just leave me a nice comment follow me subscribe and I'll send to you so the most original comment it will receive this photograph all right okay I hope you have a wonderful day give me some love if you like this video thumbs up subscribe hit the bell to do not miss my video and I'll be seeing you soon. All right, have a wonderful day, everybody. Ciao.